<laughs> this is 1.3, day two. We're going to continue simplifying square roots, but we're going to now add and subtract square root radicals. Um, to simplify with adding and subtracting radicals, don't need to write these steps down. The first thing you want to do is make sure you simplify or break down your radicals like we did in 1.3 day one lesson. And then it, to add and subtract, you have to add and subtract like radicals, and I'll show you that on the next slide. Uh, you combine the outside stuff together, the coefficients, and the radicals come along for the ride. All right. This slide, what does a like radical look like? To have a like radical, it must have the same index and same radicand. So in this case, the square root of 2 and 3 square roots of 2 both have the same index of 2, and they have the same radicand of 2. Next example. These are considered like radicals. They have the same index of 2 and the same radicand of 15. These are alike. Same index again of 2, and then the radicand is a, b squared. So you could add and subtract these two radicals. Now if we go down to the unlike ones, the reason why these two are not alike is because they have different radicands. There's a 5 and a 2, unlike. These are unlike because they have a, not the same radicand of x and 3x. These are not alike because they don't have the same radicand. They have an xy squared and an x squared y. So when you combine these, you must add and subtract their coefficients, and only when they're like radicals. All right, let's go ahead and do some examples. 9 squares of 3 plus 7 squares of 3. We can add these two radicals together because they are like radicals. They have the same index of a square root, and they have the same radicand of 3. So you add their coefficients. The coefficients are 9 and 7. So 9 plus 7, and then the radicand comes along for the ride, the rad our radical, which is square root of 3. So 9 plus 7 is 16. So you have 16 square roots of 3. Example B is a little more challenging because right now they don't look alike. We have the square root of 5 and the square root of 20. So what we have to do first is we have to first reduce that square root of 20. So I'm going to break down 20 as 4 times 5. And then you'll recognize that the square root of 4 is 2. Now the two radicals are alike. They both are square roots of 5. So we combine their coefficients. So 6 minus 2. And then the square root of 5 comes along for the ride. 6 minus 2 is 4 and then square root of 5. Next one. Again, these are not alike, so we need to break them down first. So 50 can be broken down into 25 and 2. And 8 can be broken down into 4 times 2. So square root of 25 is 5, so that goes out in front. And then this 2 stays underneath as a leftover. Plus 12, the square root of 4 is 2, and then this 2 stays underneath. Now what we have to do is we have to multiply the numbers in front. 2 times 5 is 10, and then square root of 2. Plus 12 times 2 is 24, and then square root of 2. Now look at the two radicals. They are alike. They both are square roots of 2. So we can combine their coefficients together. 10 plus 24, and then square root of 2 comes along for the ride. So we have 34 
square roots of 2. I think we'll go on to um, this next slide. Steps to multiplying and dividing radicals. Again, the first thing you want to do is uh, reduce your radicals down. Then multiply or divide the inside stuff for the inside stuff and the outside stuff for the outside stuff. No need to write the steps down. All right, so here's our first example. What we have is a distributed property problem. We have the square root of 2 times 4 plus 6 squares of 2. So we're going to distribute this square root of 2 into here first. We have square root of 2 times 4. Then we're going to distribute the square root of 2 into 6 square roots of 2. So we multiply like pieces together. So with the blue, we get 4 and then square root of 2. And over here, we have that 6, and then square root of 2 and square root of 2 are considered alike. Do you remember what happens when you have square root of 2 times square root of 2? You get 2. So 6 times 2 is 12, and then that 4 square roots of 2 is still just 4 square roots of 2. I tend to write the answer like this, 12 and then plus 4 square roots of 2, leave the radical at the, at the back side. Next example. Now we have um, multiplication, but it's more like a binomial times a binomial. So we have to FOIL. So we're going to start with negative 3 times 4. So there's our first. Now we're going to go to the outside. Negative 3 times 2 square roots of 2. So there's first and outside done. Now we go to inside. 5 square roots of 2 times 4. And now we go to last. 5 square roots of 2 times 2 square roots of 2. Now we multiply like parts together. Negative 3 and 4 become negative 12. Like parts in the red are negative 3 and 2. becomes negative 6 square roots of 2. Like parts in the green are the 5 and the 4. So we get 20 square roots of 2. Light parts in the black, 5 and 2. 5 times 2 is 10. And then square root of 2 and square root of 2 are light parts. I'm just going to work on this black one more time. Square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2. So we get 20. 10 times 2 is 20. Now you'll notice that these are like radicals from earlier in our lesson. Negative 6 square roots of 2 plus 20 square roots of 2 is 14 square roots of 2. And then we still have that minus 12 up there in the blue. Now when I combine negative 12 and 20, I get my 8. So again, I'd probably write my final answer as 8 plus 14 squares of 2. I'll stop the recording there.